Hey, what's going on everybody? Today I'm going to show you how to set up a dedicated Valheim server. I found this game a couple days ago and it's taken up most of my time ever since I found it. So I figured I'd show you guys how to set up your own server so you can play with uh, all your friends and have have a dedicated server that's not just running off of your PC and only there when uh, you're logged in playing Valheim. Now this is going to be split into two different videos. This first one I'm doing is for Windows and the next one is going to be my preferred way and that is using a Linux uh, server virtual machine. So let's just go ahead and get into the Windows install portion here. So first thing we're going to want to do is just go to your web browser of choice minus Google Chrome and just search for Steam CMD all one word and it should be the very first uh, link that you get steam cmd valve developer community if we go ahead and click on that and scroll down the page a little bit we should see a link right here step two download steam cmd for windows so we'll click on that link and download this zip file and go ahead and show that in the folder now this is in our downloads folder and i'm just going to go ahead and extract it out of the zip file and we are left with the executable for Steam CMD. Now we can either leave it here and do everything out of the downloads folder, or we can move it somewhere else. And I like to move it just to the root of the C drive into a Steam CMD folder. So we're gonna go ahead and create a new folder under our uh, regular C drive called Steam CMD. And you don't have to put it here. You can put it really wherever you want. You can keep it in that downloads folder. You can move it to your desktop. You can put it in documents. I just recommend making a new folder because when you run the executable, it is going to install it in that folder and it's going to create a bunch of files and folders. So here I just placed it in my new folder on the C drive. I'm going to double click it, run it, and it's going to download and install Steam CMD. And you can see it creating all of the different folders and files in this directory. And once that is done, you should have this Steam prompt here. And this is where you can start using Steam CMD. Now from here, what we're gonna do is install the Valheim dedicated server. And to do that, we first need to log into Steam. So we're gonna type in login space, and we're gonna use anonymous. So login anonymous, press enter, and I misspelled it, so it's asking me for a password, which I don't want and it just exited me out okay so no worries if we open up a command prompt if you do lose that steam um, prompt from the installer you can get back to it just by browsing to wherever you installed it so we're going to do a change directory to c steam cmd and to launch steam cmd again all we have to do is just type steam cmd as long as we're in that folder that we installed it to and now we have our prompt back so login anonymous, hopefully I spelled it right that time. Yep, connecting anonymously to Steam Public. So some servers, if you're familiar with Steam CMD, some servers do require you be logged in as your actual Steam account, and others you can get by with just logging in anonymously. The Valheim server is one that you can just use an anonymous login to run. You don't have to tie it to your Steam account or anything like that. Now the next step is to actually install the Valheim dedicated server files. And to do that, we're just gonna do app underscore update and then specify the code for Valheim, which is 896660. And at the end of that, we're gonna put validate to validate those server files. Now, before I run this, I will show you one more command that you can use if you would like, and that is the force underscore install underscore directory command. And if you use this, you can set it to wherever you want to install it. So if we want to actually put these server files somewhere other than where we installed Steam CMD, we can. It's like, for example, we could do C users, username, desktop, Valheim, and that would install the server files to a folder called Valheim on our desktop. But I'm not going to use that. And if we don't use that command, it's just going to install it in this same Steam CMD folder under Steam Apps. So let's go ahead and run that app update command with validate at the end. And this is going to download and install the dedicated server files. And if you really want to see where it's putting them, you can go to the Steam CMD folder, Steam apps, common, and here's Valheim dedicated server. Right now it's showing as empty because we haven't really downloaded those files yet, but that's what it's working on. And there we go. You can see we have a bunch of files and folders and our Steam CMD prompt is saying success it was fully installed. So at this point we can go ahead and just type in exit in that steam prompt and that's going to close 
this uh, command window. Well, it would have if you were still in the same command window as when you launched SteamCMD. So I'm just going to type exit twice to completely close that out. Now we have SteamCMD installed and all of our dedicated server files present. So the next thing we want to do is edit this file called start headless server dot bat. And this is a regular batch file. If we right click and click on edit, it should open it in notepad. And there's a few things that we want to change here. Now the main line, if you're familiar with batch files, all of these that say REM are just remarks. These are just notes uh, for you if you want to read them. And then this echo statement is just going to show in the command prompt when you launch it, this statement. And then this is for Steam CMD to use. But this is what actually launches your server. So Valheim server, no graphics, batch mode, name my server. This is one that we want to change. We're going to be changing the my server portion, the port if we want to, the world, and the password again if we want to. You really don't have to change any of this, but this is how it's going to show up in the community servers list or in Steam. So if you leave this all as default, it's going to show up as my server and secret. And if you don't want anybody in the world connecting to it who knows this default password of secret, then you're going to want to change those. So I'm just going to put in Toasty's server here for the name. We're going to keep the port on default. Um, you can change this. And what I have noticed is it goes in twos, which I'll show you that in a little more detail when we get to the port forwarding part. But if we have this set to 2456, it's going to use 2456 and or 2457. I'm not entirely sure the who, what, why, when, how on that port. But if you look in the guides, all of them say, well, some of them say to forward 2456 through 2457 and others say 2456 through 2458. But what I have found is that you want to forward two ports for the server. So if you want to run multiple servers on the same computer, you can, but these need to be at least two apart. So instead of 2456, if we're installing another server, we'll put it on 2458. And then the next one will be 2460 and so on and so forth. You can do that if you want, but we're going to keep this at 2456. Okay, so the next one is going to be world. This is just the name of the world. If you don't already have a world designated, it's going to create a new one with whatever name. This really doesn't matter. I want to say that it's the seed, but I can't say with 100% accuracy that it actually is. But I do know that if you are importing an existing world into a dedicated server, you will need to change this to whatever the world was already called. But we're just going to name this Toasty World. And for the password, we'll go ahead and just change that from secret to uh, password. Now all we have to do is save this batch file, exit out of it, and run it. So if we double click this, it'll say starting, press control C to exit, and it's going to go through all of the startup process. Now this can take anywhere between like one minute to 15 minutes. Um, the line that we're looking for is either the dungeon DB or connections line, and we'll see that once it's done here. But mine usually take a very short amount of time to actually launch, but I have had some machines and some servers that will take upwards of five to 10 minutes to fully boot. Now, while it's doing that, let's go ahead and port forward our router so that we can access this uh, from the outside and it'll show up in the actual server listing for Valheim. And this is going to vary depending on your router's make and model. Uh, if you're not sure how to port forward on your specific uh, router, then Google the make and model and how to port forward it. But on mine, I am using a Ubiquiti Edge router. So we're gonna go ahead and go to the firewall NAT tab and we're automatically in the port forwarding rules. Now, I already have a rule set up for Valheim. This is actually uh, not in use anymore, so I'll just go ahead and remove it. Now on this specific device, we can just click add rule, the original port, which is 2456. And like I said, we're forwarding two ports, 2456 through 2457. And we need to get the forward to address. So that's just whatever computer you've installed this on. And if you're not sure what that is, just go ahead and open up another uh, command prompt window and type in ipconfig. And this local IPv4 address is what you're going to want to port forward to. So mine is 10.13.13.96. We're going to go ahead and put that in there. And then the forward to port is just going to be a mirror of our original port, 2456 to 2457. And we'll just go ahead and give that the Valheim uh, description. 
and apply. And the configuration has been applied successfully. So let's go ahead and open back up our server command prompt. And we can see that it says, here's those two commands I was talking about. Dungeon DB is usually the second to last command to run. And then once you see this game server connected, the, that means the server is running. Now, sometimes you do have to restart it for it to actually show up in Steam but let's go ahead and open a Steam server listing and see if it shows up. All right, and here is where things are gonna get a little bit uh, weird and I'll explain why. Now, if you're not familiar with this window, this is in the view tab of your Steam application. And if you just go to view, down there to servers it's going to pop this window up and we can sort by game and also put in what map we want or this is basically the name of our valheim server so we're just going to go ahead and select valheim in the game filter and if we type in toast which if you remember we named our uh, new server toasties server um, it should show up here however this is probably going to be hit or miss on your computer and the reasoning for that is uh, because the IP address that your server is going to be advertising is your public IP. And a lot of home networks have issues with connecting to its own public IP. So on mine, this does not show up in the list. Now you can enable some things that are supposed to allow this to show up, but 90% of the time you're not going to see your own server in the public server listing if it's on your same home network. But one way that you can verify that it's working is if you go to favorites and then click add a server and type in the local IP address of the server you just created, it should show up. So if we do 10.13.13.96 colon two four five six and add this address to favorites, then it should show up. And right there, if we hit refresh, we can see it responded as Toasty's server and then it goes kind of back and forth between that and not responding. This is also another weird thing. Um, not entirely sure why that is, but let's just go ahead and connect to server and it says server is not responding. Something else you can do here is add that same server with the other port number that I was talking about, which is uh, 2457 and add this address to favorites. Usually that second port works a lot better on the home network. Not entirely sure why, but let's just go ahead and try to connect to it. It's going to launch the game. We're going to select this character and it's going to automatically take us to that server that we selected. Type in the password that we made for it, which is just password. And we are loading in and we are in our new server. So the server is working on the home network and just take my word for it. Your friends on the outside will see that server in the public server listing. However, it's one of those weird networking quirks where it's not going to show up for you most of the time on your own network. So that is how you set up a Valheim dedicated server. It does get a little bit wonky there at the end, especially with the home network specific stuff and having to directly connect to it through the favorites list um, on your own network. But you kind of just have to take my word for it that the other people that you want to play with, it will show up fine for them in their server listing. Now, hopefully you're able to get this um, off the ground and hopefully you learned something and I will see you in the next video. Please check out the Linux setup video if that's something that interests you. That is my preferred way to do this. However, the Windows version is pretty straightforward as well. So as always, happy network.